graphite has many excellent properties, such as its conductivity, resistance to high temperatures and corrosion. These properties make it an essential component in the production of lithium batteries, but it is also used in the realization of many other types of batteries. The method I am illustrating allows you to make flexible graphite sheets, with dimensions can be established by your needs and with thicknesses starting from 0.2 mm to 2 mm and more. The materials needed are visible on the screen. Carbon black nanometric powder, graphite micrometric powder, polyvinyl acetate glue, distilled water. A dough is first prepared with the main components, and an ink of the consistency of a cream is obtained. The technique used for molding, is the one used in screen printing. On the screen you can see the plastic frames of the size of the sheet that you want to obtain. The thickness of these plastic frames, establishes the thickness of the graphite sheet that will be obtained. To spread the conductive ink is used a doctor blade for screen printing. Visible in the photo, the molding takes place on a sheet of polyethylene or above a transparent A4 document holder. On the screen you can see the formula for the preparation of the ink, with which the graphite plate will be produced. Now the movie of the preparation of graphite ink and printing. On the porcelain cup were put 3.5 grams of graphite and 1.5 grams of carbon black that must be thoroughly mixed. The presence of carbon black in the mixture helps to make the resulting foil more flexible and also contributes to decreasing its electrical resistance. There are various types of carbon black, and the most conductive is the one derived from acetylene, also known as acetylene black. Once the mixing is complete, I add 8 grams of polyvinyl glue and start mixing. I use here the vinyl glue patics by Henkel. The use of glues of other brands, having a different density, may require the use of different quantities. If the glue used is excessive, there will be an increase in electrical resistance of graphite sheet. If the amount is low, the sheet will have poor mechanical strength, with a tendency to present cracks. As is evident, the mixture is too thick, and, therefore should be diluted, with a small amount of water. With a pipette I add 1 ml of water. I add another milliliter of water and continue mixing. It is important that this ink that I will use to print is the consistency of a cream, that it is homogeneous and absolutely free of lumps, fluid but not too much. And finally another 0.5 milliliters of water. Now the mixture is ready for printing. The print is made on a transparent envelope for A4 documents. The printing bed consists of a plastic plate, PVC, below which there is an iron plate, that allows, with the use of some neodymium magnets to block the objects necessary for the operation to the printing bed. On top of the plastic sheet, the plastic frame is placed and firmly fixed with four magnets.
graphite ink is smeared with a spatula on the top of the frame. And we continue to print with Dr. Blade. All objects used for printing must then be washed immediately with water because once the ink has hardened it does not take off anymore. The frame should be left to rest for 3 to 4 minutes. Now I remove the 4 magnets and the frame. On the plastic bag remains the graphite sheet, that must dry in the air, slowly, time needed 24 hours. After 24 hours, the polyvinyl acetate graphite slurry has completely dried. And all that remains is to remove it from the underlying plastic sheet. The sheet of graphite that during drying has deformed a little, must be placed inside a sheet of paper and subjected to a slight pressure, that it will make it perfectly flat. In this case it was put inside a book and left there for one day. On the fully formed graphite plate of dimensions 14.5 x 14.5 cm and thickness 0.6 mm I perform a measurement of the resistance. which results in 7.2 ohms. This is another graphite plate, with a thickness of 1.4 millimeters. With this, it will be built the electrode described below. And its resistance is 18.9 ohms. This is another sheet with a thickness of only 0.2 millimeters. and its resistance is 10 ohms. This is the electrode I tested in the hypochlorite aluminum battery. The resistance is 10.2 ohm. Now a comparison with a commercial product, the graphite brush of an electric motor.
This measures about 17 ohms. For the realization of the electrode I use a 1.4 mm thick sheet of graphite, cutting out the necessary part with the scissors. The central part of the electrode consists of a stainless steel mesh that acts as a collector, with the precise function of lowering the internal resistance of the electrode. To perform everything I use the usual magnetic plane, which allows me with two magnets to lock the elements being processed in the correct position. To fix the stainless steel mesh to the graphite plate, I use the same graphite ink used for the construction of the plate. If stored in an airtight container, the ink keeps for a long time without hardening, and here it is used as a glue and sealant. With a spatula I apply the glue so as to completely cover the stainless mesh, excluding the areas of the magnets. I then leave everything to rest for 3 hours so that the sealant hardens a little, but not too much. I then remove the two magnets and finish covering the areas remained uncovered. Now the construction is finished, the electrode only needs to remain stationary 24 hours, to allow the sealant to harden completely. Thank you for your attention, to the next.